The Netflix film To All the Boys, P.S. I Still Love You, picks up where the first left off. Surprisingly, the first one was sweet, funny, and endearing. So does this one capture the same magic and charm? Laura Jean and Peter are now officially a couple, but trouble and awkwardness come when one of her letters is finally delivered. Lana Condor and Noah Centineo reprise the roles for this Netflix rom-com. They're both cute and bumbling and timidly awkward as they learn to navigate this new relationship, especially now that it's become legitimate. You get a lot of the familiar teenage bungling through conversations and actions, which helps to make this just a little bit believable. And that's a good thing because some of the actors look like they're well into their 20s, even though they're trying to play teenagers in high school. This is still a cute watch, but it didn't grab me the way that the first one did. It took quite a while for me to become fully invested in this. And I think some of that is because I didn't feel an urgency or I didn't feel like anything was at risk of being lost. It was just a very safe story that was being built and told for me. Then though comes this very uncomfortable treehouse scene. And that's when it clicked. That's when I was all in because now something was on the line. It felt fragile. The relationships, all of the relationships between all of these people felt fragile. They were at kind of a breaking point or at least at a part where we don't know what could happen. They could really go off the deep end or they could be salvaged. And finally, yes, now I'm invested. The bad thing though is it took about an hour till we get to that point. And I think the movie's only about an hour and 40 minutes. So there wasn't much left of the film, but even still, I was invested at that point. I was loving it. And I didn't care if there were cheesy moments that still were yet to come because I was enjoying the ride. Now there were cheesy moments throughout the entire film. You can't get around it. It's a rom-com and it's okay. I, I looked at it, I overlooked them, I went through them, I rolled my eyes at them, I laughed along with them. Some of them worked, some of them didn't. But I certainly didn't mind them towards the end of the film because like I said, I was all in. Yes, the movie does feel familiar and that's because it's using pretty much the same romantic comedy template as so many other movies. And had they not had that scene towards the end or three quarters of the way into the film, then it wouldn't have even been worth watching because it just would have been more of the same. But it gathered some charm and it grabbed hold of me and it sparked a little bit of the magic that the first one had and showed us just the fun that we could have because now things were on the line and there was a relationship that we were to care about. The soundtrack in this is pretty fun and there's a great 80s reference right at the beginning of the movie. Now overall, this is a fun watch even though it doesn't capture all of the magic that was contained in the first film. It's definitely good for a casual watch with your sweetie. I don't think you'll go wrong by sitting down on the couch and giving it a go. Most of the acting is good and fun. I do wish we would have gotten more of John Corbett just because I really like him as an actor, but what we get, he's still that cheesy dad guy. And so he is fun. We don't get as much of the little sister as I was hoping for because at the beginning she's spunky and she's just fiery and she's got that little bit of an evil streak to her, but not in a, not in a bad way. She, she means well. And that's what got Laura Jean into the trouble in the first movie was her sister. And so I, I, we get more of her in this, but I just wanted to see even more of her because I liked her as a character. The actor playing John Ambrose is fun. I really enjoyed him. He is an amazing piano player, if that was really him playing it, because the, some of the, the musical pieces that happen on the piano are just outstanding. Uh, so it doesn't matter. If he didn't play it, fine, because they were still great. If he did play it, wow, good on him. The great thing about this romantic comedy is it's already on Netflix. You don't have to pay to go see it. You don't have to just get out of the house. You can sit in your PJs on the couch if you want and just snuggle up with somebody and enjoy it. There's no sex, nudity, or violence. There is some profanity. I give to all the boys, P.S. I still love you, three out of five couches. So what's your favorite romantic comedy? Can you narrow it down to one? That'd be hard for me because there's a lot of them that I like. I'm a sucker for a good rom-com. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for catching with me.